Good evening, everybody. Warm welcome to the channel. Tonight, uh, and this is the second video. The first video I did was for a trailer. But tonight, I want to do a, uh, a video on a review of a vintage piece of equipment. Uh, one that I'm very fond of and I collect. I have a few models. Two of them I've got tuned for, for, for good work. Uh, and a couple of those are just for parts. But uh, this brush was made back in the, I think around the 1930s or 40s, right up until about probably late 90s into the early 2000s. And this is the, uh, the Pash Model V. And later on, which is a side feed, and later on it came in the Pash VJR, the V Junior. This brush was uh, used by illustrators and photo retouchers. It is a brush that is very, uh, you know, similar to the format back in the day for most uh, companies that made airbrushes that were for illustration work. Um, and that all the brushes were very, very short from the trigger to the front of the airbrush. Sorry about the scratching, that's just my dog. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't mind her. But um, nowadays you see most of these brushes are much, much longer, much heavier. Uh, everybody's gone with a, all companies with a large gravity feed cup on the top and which are great they spray great my micron cmc plus is like that beautiful brush to spray uh unmatched but um when you get a little brush like this in your hand it's really hard to to get away from it because it's so comfortable and what's nice about it is that the cup can be on the side even with the vjr having a small cup it um it, uh, you can see over top of it quite easily and you can get more close to the work and, and have a better visual. So that was sort of the format of how they designed uh, illustration brushes back in the day. And then along came the computer and kind of uh, changed the face of illustration and, it, and, and the airbrushes purpose in the field of illustration. So this little brush is, um, it's it comes in two different head sizes. Comes in the number one head size, which if you look, there'll be a little line here on the uh, on the air cap. That's to indicate the uh, fluid tip and needle one size, which um, is a 0.25 or 0.26. And they also made a larger number two size, which was a 0.66, which is for heavier flow. This was for very uh, fine fine detail and uh, it's a very, very small spray pattern. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this brush apart and we're going to uh, put it back together and then we're gonna, we're gonna do some work spraying some very, uh, some really awesome ink that I'm gonna talk about here later as well. So, uh, so with uh, further ado, we'll get started. Hey everybody, so we've got our brushes here. We've got the, uh, this older model of Pash V and a newer model that is a Pash VJR. Now the, ver the very first models of the V, and the Pash VJR actually came later. The very first models of the V um, came with a uh, sort of a different styled handle on the back. And they used to use an old style of plastic that usually had like a white swirl in it. Almost looked like something that was from a recycled plastic. <laughs> but uh, fit the brush very well. The older brushes did not have this hexagon bolt style piece on the on on the uh, on the air cap. It actually had it was just more of a of a gripping knurled piece, just like just like here on this here on the on the paint dial, and you could turn it by hand. Now in the later years, they re required you to use a uh, a spanner wrench as such. So this one here is probably dated in about the, probably around the 80s, 70s or 80s, maybe into the early 90s. Not really quite too sure, but it is later due to the, uh, the, the amount, the number here on the side. So nice thing about the older brushes too is they had a different trigger. Now when you look at the newer versions, they don't have that paint set dial and they have this uh, flattened trigger 
on the top. And you cannot interchange these triggers, okay? It just won't work. The air valve is different. The triggers are different. A lot of the internal guts are the same, such as the, uh, the piece that's in here that holds the spring and that holds the needle chuck. The, uh, the PTF nut and washers are all the same. Now, the, again, the, uh, the head assemblies are much different. This is the newer version. You can see how it's more elongated. The shorter version is, is actually quite short. Um, and that's about it for the changes. Um, I found the older ones are much smoother. You can see how that easily pulls back with this one here. See that little pop? And Pash actually kind of lost the quality in the brush towards the very end period of, of running these models. The VJR was... Uh, was a, uh, a newer version of the V. Um, I think it went back into the 19, probably the 1960s or 70s and on. And the original ones had this little paint dial the same as the Vs. But as the brush got close to the end of the 90s into the early 2000s, I believe, um, they changed it to this format. Had a nicer uh, inscribe or scribing on the side or engraving, more like a laser engravement where the old ones just sort of had this letter and numbers etched on the top of it. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll get one of these apart, and uh, we'll then carry on with, uh, with some spraying. Okay, so we're going to start here with the VJR, and uh, we'll just turn off the back handle. Now, this back handle is actually from a Talon, and the Talon series has the same size handle and threading that'll work with, with the V and the VJR. And if you go on any parts list um, for PASH, whether it's the PASH site itself or say Midwest Auto or Midwest Midwest Airbrush, <laughs> Midwest Airbrush, they will give a, um, a detailed schematic of the brush. And they will also show the, uh, the talon handle in there just to say that it is interchangeable. So I had this one from my old talon. I put it on this guy. And I also had a, an open one here from a, a Pash uh, gra or Gravity Feed Talon. And I thought it looked pretty cool on there. So I took the old red handles off, which looked like this. I took them off and... I um, hope that didn't break anything. <laughs> and uh, went with a little fancier deal here. So... What we'll do is, uh, again, it's very simple. It's basically laid out the same as the Pash VL. And if you have a Pash VL, you'd be very familiar with this brush because it's pretty much identical internally from the air valve and how it works, especially the older models, to the, uh, to the chuck system and the spring tension, right up into the, uh, floating, the floating tip and everything. So we'll just undo the chuck here and we'll slide the needle out. This is the 0.26 needle. Put that away. The part's rolling away. And then we can take this part here out. And it'll just, there's the needle chuck that comes off. Extract the handle piece with the spring. And then the, the trigger easily pops out. You can see the trigger is just a little ball, just a little piece that fits over top of that valve stem and pushes down on it. Now, the older versions had a little hinge here with a piece that, like the old v VLs, to try and fit it in there, and it was really, really a pain. That's why I'm taking this one apart. And not the old one, because the parts are very similar other than just a few things. And now the head assemble. Now, as you can see on this head assemble, I have a, a rubber, black rubber O-ring here. Um, they originally didn't come with this. Okay, I put this on. It was just to kind of help to seal off any air that was leaking. I also would use um, 
things such as uh, beeswax and uh, uh, you can actually get a wax for them now to work for that. So you can use this spanner and you have to get the right size. So on these spanners, the bigger ones for the VL model and the smaller size is always for the V, VJR or the VSR90, which was a, a whole different model that had different sizes of gravity fed cups, but it ran on the same basic principles and parts as, as the V and the VJR. So we'll just take some of the pieces off. There's this here. Now you'll notice with this cap, you cannot spray this brush without this air cap or nozzle cap, sorry. All of these models you have to spray with this on. If you take it off, the brush will not spray. It's not like a, uh, some of the new Badger models or the Iwata models where you can spray with an exposed needle. Now, the VL in time, and when they first come out with, uh, I think it was in the 90s, with the uh, with the the VL version, it was the VLS VLSR ninety or VLSR Pro. That's what it was, something ninety or no VLSR Pro. Anyways, I'll I'll have to look it up. I can write it down in the description down below. Um, actually, had a special cap that went over this, and you could also get them for your VL models that gave you an exposed needle to work with, so you could you know pick pick the uh, paint off the end. Work great if you're a t-shirt brush guy, right? So as you can see, this cap comes off. I'll now uh, take off the, uh, the head here. Just lightly turn it. Be very, very careful not to let your... your uh, Fluid tip drop out. This fluid tip is kind of wedged in here a bit, which is okay. Sometimes they'll pop out. Sometimes they like to stay in there a little bit. Just be very careful if you're removing it. You don't want to, the, uh, you know, the, the fluid tips for Pash are, are really, really soft. Okay, so you'd be very, very careful you don't damage that. And here is where the air funnels in through. There's always three holes in the bottom. And then into the air cap. And of course, this is the newer version cap, so it's quite a bit different. So this is basically the brush laid out. As you see it. Here, I'll flip this around a bit better. So the parts are in line. There we have it, just like so. So now we'll just reassemble the brush. So the first thing I like to do is um, insert the, the, the trigger. And automatically, if this was the other model, the older model, I'd be like, yeah, it would take up a fair amount of this video and you hear a lot of cursing from me. So I was, you know, more in favor to do the newer version, <laughs> even though I don't find the trigger as smooth, it's much easier to install. And then of course the back piece with the spring goes in, whoops, I should get that fixed up here a little bit better. And we just screw that in like so. And then we will insert, we'll insert the needle after, put on the needle chuck. And then we can assemble, reassemble the head here. Don't, don't over tighten this because you don't want to ruin the uh, fluid tip. I just 
slightly snug it with the spanner. A little bit more ways to go. And then we can put through the needle. Very careful. Feed it through the packing washer, and then there we go. It is now out and through. So we'll tighten down that chuck a bit. Or actually, I'll withdraw the needle back just a little bit so I don't hit it with the uh, with the nozzle nozzle cap, and then back we got it here. It's always good to put a bit of lube on the needle just so it passes through your packing washers better. And there we have it. Very simple brush to take apart and put together. Very simple brush to clean. Just, you know, word of advice, just in caution, be very, very careful with the needles on these. They're, uh, they are quite fine. Um, and... They, uh, they can bend easy. The tips, you got to make sure you don't drop them because you will warp the brass quite easily. A lot of the new tips that are put into the new brushes today are much, much harder. Still, you got to be careful, but uh, they certainly are more durable than these older models. Okay, so now we got it apart and back together. We're going to do some spraying. Okay, stay with us. I'll see you in a bit. Just go through this paper with you. Now this is a paper, I use various types of uh, illustration paper. This is a lighter stuff that I use. It's actually a drawing paper. And it is by Strathmore. It is called Strathmore Tone Gray. And that's what the picture looks like on it. Of course I kind of colored her face. I was airbrushing some tint just to check out my watercolor on there. I thought it looked kind of cool. But, uh, this is what I used to do a lot of uh, little 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 studies on, and uh, it's very accepting paper. It's not as good as the um, the other stuff that I'll I'll show you in another video when we get onto a project, but I like using this. It's a 400 series Strathmore Tone Gray at 80 pound Tone Gray sketch paper, and uh, it, you know it, it it accepts the ink very nicely. And I'll be using it to do for the demonstration here today on, uh, on this airbrush. So now to the inks. So there's lots of different inks out there. You can get inks that are made by Higgins or Bombay. And I have some here just for you to see what they look like. Well, here I've got one. Okay, it's, a, it's an India ink. You can also get the acrylic inks from FW, De La Rowney. Now, these are great inks. They don't, they're... They work nice, they're, they're pretty strong. But if you're gonna be getting into airbrushing ink, there is an ink that nothing can match it. Okay, and it's made by a gentleman. They are made by a gentleman and an awesome artist. He has a YouTube channel. Uh, and his name is, if you look it up, the name is Timothy John Luke Smith PSA. And uh, he, runs a ch he runs a website called Ink Flingers, and also on Facebook. And these are his special mixtures. And um, this is an older version of them. Uh, he has them in a newer version of Bottle. And he has a new ink called Detail Ink. But he still has the light, the medium, and the dark. These inks are so well refined. Um, the tip dry is almost non-existent in it. Um, most of these other inks I use, like Higgins or this Bombay, I'll be like brushing it off fairly quickly with a uh, with a brush and some and some alcohol. But these here, they just go 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 go, and you'll always have a, a really clean needle. Um, it, I don't know. He he's just got a magical recipe here uh, for detail. They flow beautifully, and uh, I will put down a link down below. Um, the the website that he has where you can purchase these. Uh, these are the black version, black ink Indian ink version. Um, 
and he also has I don't know if it's Indian ink. I, I I I'm not too sure he'd be able to tell you better, but uh, or I may touch with uh, uh, touch on that with him. But um, it also comes. This is the uh, the black ink version. But you can also I believe, and I'll have to check with this website again. I think he even had a sepia, but I'll have to double check that. But these are I, I just wow guys you have to use these and when I show you the demonstration with these you'll you'll understand what I'm talking about this this if you're going to be serious at, at using ink for airbrush this is the stuff you need I've never sprayed an ink better than this okay so uh, we'll get our little brush today I'm going to use the uh, not the one I took apart but I'm going to use the side feed version in the uh, number one uh, head assemble which is the 0.25 and I'll get you a feeling of just how fine detail this brush can be. Okay, and that's an old brush. All right, guys. Well, I'll see you shortly here in a second. Okay, so I've got a real close up on the paper. We started with the uh, with the dark mixture, and uh, again, these are from uh, from Timothy John Luke Smith from Ink Flingers, and uh, again, I'll have a description down below for you to uh, go onto the website and purchase these inks because they are absolutely amazing so we'll start here i've got probably around 20 pounds or 25 pounds now my compressor is really loud if it kicks in here i'll try and edit it out but uh we'll just start with some with the air and we'll get some real some real close line work here i'll just kind of zoom out a little bit if i can here there we go. So again, we're just going to go with some real, real fine lines and squiggles. We'll get some fine lines done here. Very light. This ink is so easy flowing. And I'm only at a very low pressure. It could probably go a bit lower, but I think it would get a bit grainy with this brush. It's not like a micron where it can spray at super low super low air pressures but with this fine ink it actually sprays it around just a little under 20 and we'll still spray fairly well dot work again here we'll get some you can see it atomizes beautifully and there's not a lot of air pressure going through this some real small dots there Well, if you can see them, we can we can blow up to it in a bit here. Yeah, we get some real fine lines going. Do we adjust the paper here in front of the camera? And it does a fairly wide spray pattern. So we'll zoom out. I can here. <laughs> Just switch to a different field if I can. Well, we'll just keep spraying. Draw a little picture here. I, mean, I always like to paint the odd apple. It's a little bit of an odd shaped apple or circle, but. It's more like a pear. Yeah, we'll spray in the centerpiece here. It's not the best because we've got an awkward angle here. And again, it's super, super fine. Hmm. 
going to mess the stem up. But you just kind of get the picture. Again, it leaves this ink in real fine, fine layers. Very subtle. Really is an amazing ink, guys. Now, the, this brush is, you know, as for an old brush, roughly about, I'd say, 30 to 35 years of age. It has very, very good control. Like, again, the, the line dots, you can get... Uh, Its spray pattern is, I can try and zoom out here. I'm sort of having trouble doing that. But uh, we can angle it here a little bit more to a different spot. Okay, and the line work is really, really tight. And if you can see that, that's super fine. And if you notice too, there's no buildup on that needle. Look at that. You can even catch a little bit of, of shine of the chrome at the tip of that needle. This ink has not at all built up. It's done nothing but slide off because it's so finely made. It just gives you the best of control. A lot of the modern day brushes your microns, there's a brush that Timothy sells. It's a uh, Patriot Arrow, I believe. Unbelievable detail. You can also look at that on his channel, on the link down below. The, the detail that he does is just unbelievable. But for a review, I thought it would be kind of neat to sort of pay homage to this little guy. He, uh, he's been definitely forgotten about. Uh, a brush that was, you know, in its day, one of the best sprayers. How does it compare with the new ones today? Uh, it doesn't, because I, I have a Micron, I have a CMC Plus. Um, but to compare it with that, or the, uh, again, the Patriot Arrow that, uh, that Timothy has custom built. The, um, also your uh, 771 uh, from Creos. Those are your finest in detail. Um, some of the hardened steam back are very, very fine as well. Uh, but for an old, old brush, man, I tell you, I definitely want to be using this one in some projects because I definitely have use for it. Some old dagger strokes. Okay. So there it is, the old Pash V, the vintage Pash V, or the VJR, or the VSR90, which was uh, a longer body version of this, all the same internals, but had uh, um, removable cups, gravity-fed cups in different sizes. So Pash, why you quit making it, I don't know. You really had a gold mine here. Um, not to say your new brushes aren't good, they really are good, they're spectacular, but... Uh, I don't know. For the old illustration brushes, again, everything is so close to the paper. Everything is so easy to see. You can get right, right up and in control of your of your painting. And I'm just mamelessly making circles here, but just to show you how close and that this brush is still spraying. This ink has not at all tip dried. And I have total control of flow. Oh, a little bit of bleed there. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and this review. Um, please like, share, and uh, subscribe. All right. Hopefully the next videos here we'll have will be either another review on the materials that I use and uh, or we'll actually get on to a, uh, an actual project. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Have a good evening. Bye-bye for now.